using microscopes. The aim of this practical is to prepare a microscope slide and then use a light microscope to observe the cells and subcellular structures of a specimen. We will have a look at how to prepare this slide using onion cells. You can view other types of cells such as human cheek cells or look at live specimens using a light microscope as well. When using light microscopes, we need to remember some key terms. Magnification is the number of times larger the microscope image is than the original object itself, so the cells that you're viewing. The resolution is the smallest distance between two points that can still be seen as two separate points. As you increase the magnification and the focus of your microscope, you will increase the resolution. Stains are chemicals that are added to specimens that are viewed under microscopes to help see the different structures better. And you should remember that today's best light microscopes can magnify up to 1,500 times, with resolutions down to 0.0001 millimeters. In school, your microscopes might not be quite this powerful. You'll be handling glass during this experiment, so you need to handle this with care. And iodine is the stain we're going to use, which is harmful, so you should wear eye protection when using it. The equipment you'll need to prepare a microscope slide is the microscope slide itself and a cover slip, a knife, a pipette, onion, white tile, iodine solution, mounted needle and forceps or tweezers. You'll also need a light microscope to view your cells. These may differ from classroom to classroom, but the main steps taken to focus and view a slide are the same. Remember, this equipment is quite expensive, so you must carry it carefully by holding both the base and the arm with two hands to avoid damage to the microscope or avoid injury to yourself. To prepare a microscope slide, you first need to take an onion, place it on a white tile, and use a knife to cut it into sections. You will only need a small piece of the onion, no wider than the microscope slide itself. Place this to one side and take your microscope slide, holding it via the sides so that you don't get your fingerprints on the flat surface. Use a pipette to put one drop of water onto the microscope slide. This will help hold your onion on the slide. Now use the tweezers or forceps to carefully peel a thin layer of the epidermal tissue from the inner surface of the piece of onion. It will be an opaque layer of cells that you can then put onto the microscope slide, making sure it's nice and flat on the water drop to be held on. Now use two drops of iodine on the onion tissue Remember, iodine reacts with starch, so adding it to the onion tissue will make the cell walls easier to see. If you're viewing a live specimen, for example if you've got a sample of pond water and you're looking for microorganisms, staining won't be necessary as it will disrupt the live organisms you're trying to view. Likewise, there are different stains you can use to see different subcellular structures. For example, methylene blue is normally used to visualise the nucleus better. You can now place your cover slip at a 45 degree angle to the slide at one Use edge a mounted of the needle drop of to now either hold the onion flat on the slide or help you lower down the cover slip. Lowering the cover slip gently reduces the amount of air bubbles you get underneath it. And now, if you have any air bubbles or excess liquid around the microscope slide, you can then use a paper towel on the edges of the cover slip to soak up this excess liquid. So you've now prepared your microscope slide and it's ready for viewing. To use the microscope, you need to place the slide on the stage and clip it into place using the stage clips. You then rotate the nose piece to the lowest power objective lens, which should be labelled. Looking from the side of the microscope like we are now, you can use the course adjustment knob to move the stage towards the lens. The end of the objective lens should almost touch the side. 
You need to be very careful to not move the stage too quickly because this can cause the objective lens to hit the microscope slide, damaging both the slide and the microscope itself. Turning the microscope on now, you can look through the eyepiece. You can again turn the course adjustment knob to slowly move the slide away until the cells come into focus in the field of view, as you can see on the right hand side. Now rotate the nose piece to a higher power objective lens. Look through the eyepiece again and slightly rotate the fine adjustment knob and this will bring the cells into clear focus. And you should notice at a higher magnification, you can see the cells in more detail and should be able to identify some subcellular structures, such as the cell wall and the nucleus. So microscopes are a powerful tool for examining cells and their cell structures. In order to make a permanent record of what you have seen when examining a specimen, it is useful to make a drawing. It is important to draw what you actually see, which will depend on the resolution of the microscope you are using. When you are drawing, it would first be helpful to draw an outline of the field of view. Within that, you can draw outlines of your specimen, which will help keep your diagram in proportion. You can even measure the lengths to help with this. Remember to only use simple, narrow lines rather than shading. The labels that you have to include on in your diagrams include a title, names of cell structures that you can see, such as the nucleus and cell wall, and the magnification or scale used to observe the object. Here are some tips for making your biological drawings. From your biological drawing, you may be asked to calculate the size of objects that you see in a microorganism seen under a microscope. We can use the equation triangle on the left to help us calculate the real size of the object. So we'll cover up that portion of the triangle and we'll write out our formula. We want to calculate the real size of the object, so we're going to need to divide the image size by the magnification. First of all, we need to divide the image size given in the question as 0.3 millimeters by the magnification times 400 which gives us an answer of 0 0.00075 millimetres. But we need to give our answer now in micrometres. So converting this, we need to know that there is one millimetre to every thousand micrometres. So we will times our answer by a thousand to get our answer in micrometres of 0 0.075 micrometres. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Subscribe to our channel to check out more of Century's content. And visit our website to find out about our learning platform.